is no lesson lecture for this one. Well, I did put a slideshow together. I did. Uh, I put it together an example. Um, oh, okay. So, but for the recording, hello everyone. Today is Wednesday, August fifth. Mm -hmm. This is Wes Fryer, and this is our session on live teaching tools. And um, we may have a few others join us, but these are optional workshops that we've got going to help our faculty um, be able to use some different kinds of tools. And this is the first time we've actually done a session on the live teaching tools. And so um, what, I'll, what I'll do, and this is also set up to be very interactive. So Joanne, feel free to interrupt me as we kind of go along here. Um, I'm putting a link into the slideshow there, which goes to this page. And so on our uh, remote learning support site, uh, we've got a lot of different modules. And so from the home page here, and this looks a little bit different um, this year with just a, with some new resources, um, a lot of the things that got built this summer are about making videos. But underneath the teacher tab, we have different modules. And so this live teaching is one of our modules. And uh, if it's too loud outside, I may actually have to go close my door. Um, but this is the one that talks about live teaching tools. And so what I wanted to do in this session was, was I'm going to demonstrate uh, one of these that I learned about this summer that's free, that's called Woo Clap. But there are lots of different tools that we can use when we have students, I mean, either face to face or when we're remote uh, or with, uh, with Flex, because these are live tools. So they're going to be best used when we've got students real time with us. But you don't have to wait till we go into remote learning to be able to use some of these. And I think that th this particular area of live teaching tools is really one of the best ways that we can engage students to get them, um, you know, participating actively in our in our lessons. So um, what I want to do is I'm going to uh, so well I'll, we'll get this. I'm going to get you into into my presentation. And um, and what I need to do is give you this link. So if you will, in the chat, click on this link. This is a, the example I'm using here is called Moo Clap. And I went to a conference this summer. And hello, Emily. Hi. I went to a conference this summer uh, that was called the Mountain Moo. And it was a bunch of, well, it was mainly people in Montana who use Moodle but it ended up being like, there were over, I don't know, there were a couple hundred people that participated, but there were a lot of people that were really experienced with distance learning and remote learning. And a lot of them are university, but there's a lot of K-12 too. And so this tool, WooClap, like Pear Deck, like Poll Everywhere, like some different tools, it lets you bring together um, poll questions and um, word clouds and slideshows and things like that, but make them much more interactive when you're real time with students. So since we're one-to-one, -one, well, we're not calling it one-to-one, -one, but I got to figure out what we call it. Since every student has a device this year, which I am like over the moon with, even as I'm in class, because I'm teaching six sections this year, I've got two Spanish fifth grade, and then I've got four computer um, I plan to use these face-to-face -face with students. Even the first day, um, the one I want to use with you right now, I'm, I'm planning to start using because as a bell ringer activity, when they come in and they have a, something to respond to, one of the things that's really powerful, um, we, I think we want to understand and use Google Classroom because that's where, you know, that's where my, most of my assignments are. What I'm talking about in this session is not a replacement for Google Classroom or for, for uh, Seesaw if teachers use that. This is really an augmentation of making your lessons more interactive and participatory so that students have a lot of opportunity to be answering questions, putting their ideas in, and then seeing those results come live so that we can have conversations about what their you know, pre-existing knowledges and, and their ideas, et cetera. So if you guys, and, and this is, um, I've really only played with this a little bit. I haven't done this in a live webinar. So this is also my chance to, to play with this and see how it, it will work. If you all will click on that link that I put into the chat that says wooclap.com and then there's a, a code that's after that, 
Um, what I have done, and I'll show, the, show you the website is, and how it loads, is I've created a WooClap. I've created what they call an event. So I think if you guys click on that link, you should see a question right now that says, did you use interactive live tools outside of, of Google Classroom and Seesaw in the spring? Do you guys see that question? No. Wes, can you hear me at all? Yeah, I can hear you. Um, so Google Meets does not work on my computer here. My entire computer. Oh, and you just went mute too. What? Oh man, and we lost her. Joanne, are you able to see the? Yes. Yes. Okay. So uh, go ahead and click on one of those answers. Can you click okay. on yes or no? Yeah, I'll click on yes, and then submit. Uh huh. And then okay. submit. Yay, look at that. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah. So, and then are you able to see my screen? Well, I mean, you're seeing the same screen. So okay. did, did you see the, huh, cool. So, so with, so these are, <laughs> not all of our students are basically going to have one screen. I think as a teacher, if we're able to have more than one screen, especially if we're at home, that can really help. But WooClap is set up so that you can, like this, have a question, um, have a poll, things like that. Uh -huh. And this is what students will have up on their screen. So whether they have an iPad or they have a, a Chromebook or another kind of laptop, whatever, whatever they have, um, this, is the, this, this is the page that they'll look at. And okay. so um, I have the ability, in addition to the questions, to go ahead and show results and... Um, then I'm going to go on to my next activity. So the next one that uh, you hopefully see on your screen, it asks yeah. a question, what live teaching tools have you used in the past uh -huh. and do you like? So do you have a blank that you can fill in there? Um, uh, like to... For example, like what type of... Live... So maybe... Um, so these would th these would be uh, anything like that's on this list. So Google Form is is one that you can use to have yeah, a survey. Yeah. Okay. Kahoot is a gaming uh, platform where kids yeah. all you know have a kind of like a game show a little bit. Uh huh. Um, Nearpod and Pear Deck are two different platforms that are a little bit like WooClap, where they let you have a slideshow, but then you can ask questions. Go formative, Socrative, OneNote. Um, all of these things would be examples of different tools. I so, think I used the Google Forms. Perfect. Awesome. Yeah. So go ahead and type in Google Forms. And um, this is kind of cool. So and then send and, it. Yep. And then send. Yep. And so what I'm seeing as the teacher, um, I just see that you wrote Google Forms. Uh -huh. And I can change the view of how I'm looking at those. So this was the first question I asked was a multiple choice question. Yes. This one is a word cloud. And um, I can, I can, if we had more answers that were coming in, uh -huh. we would see them appear, you know, like a cloud. And if there were more answers, it would get bigger. And the answers that only had one time would be smaller. But this is an, uh, an example of an open-ended question. Okay. Um, all right. So okay. I am really, just, I am driving this presentation just using my, my Chrome web browser. Um, and I'm going to show you here in a second, you know, how I, um, how I built this. Oh, look. Oh, shoot. Let me go back. Okay. Look at that. So we have two, uh, uh, Kahoot and Google Forms that came in as well. So, you know, this is Google Classroom is very powerful and it lets us, um, I'm not, I don't want to. I don't want to communicate that I think we, we don't want to use Google Classroom. I think we do. But the live aspect of especially if, if, we're, going to, if we're going to teach a remote learning lesson, mm -hmm. um, that's really more what I'm thinking about. Because with flex learning, most of what I understand we're going to provide to students is not going to be live. We're going to, to send them some recordings. Mm -hmm. I'm going to you know, make some videos. And so um, we're, we're not going to be, um, you know, doing uh, this kind of thing 
a lot um, with with our students. Uh -huh. So um, what I've got down here, I ha I only loaded two different questions. Okay. Uh, but and I've done those. But if I decided, oh, I need to ask another question, um, I I have down here at the bottom my questions and my presentation. So I'm going to um, I can choose a, to make a, a quick question, a poll, a brainstorm, an open question or a word cloud. And so um, let me just do an open question and you cannot vote anymore. Um, let's see. And I've got to, huh. Well, that's interesting. All right, maybe I went off my script and thought I could go ahead and create create a new one, but I'm not seeing where it's going to let me edit it. Well, so let me, so I had just planned to do my two questions. Let me show you what, what it does when I, when I click here on presentation. Okay. So I can toggle over to the presentation that I've uh, made. And this is more like a traditional slideshow. Um, and it is, I mean, I made this in Google slides. So the, these are the live teaching tools that we have, you know, linked on here today. And I can go ahead and advance to my next slide. Um, one of the resources that I created this summer in July was for how to make this thing called a lesson cast. And that's when you're teaching your students um, live and in person. And, you know, you'd like to record part of what you're doing mm -hmm. and send it to them and, uh -huh. and take as few steps as possible. So... The lesson cast is not a live conference. We're doing a live conference right now that we're recording. That's not what a lesson cast is. And really, I put these slides in here to just kind of give you a demonstration of, <laughs> of this live teaching tool and how this works. Because when we're teaching, especially for remote learning, um, the we're probably going to be doing a combination of having some things we've recorded and we've done for students in advance, but we're also going to want to do things live. And so um, I, I use the Google slideshow a lot and I think it's really good to have some slides, but I'm, but I don't want to sit there and talk to my students for 15 minutes without them, you know, answering a question and, and, you know, being able to participate. So, um, anyway, the, the lesson cast, and, and so I could go through these slides and kind of describe, but I basically wanted to do that for you as an example of one of these tools. Um, so this is WooClap. It is completely free. It doesn't cost anything for us in, in uh, K-12. It only costs money for university people. And um, like I said, here at the bottom, you kind of drive the presentation and you, you go between um, answering um, or asking questions and having polls and um, and having your slides. So, anyway, that is my little my little demonstration of uh, of WooClap. So, um, what do you what do you um, you have any questions that you want to ask about that? Um, um. I don't think I know enough to ask question yet. <laughs> right. Okay. Well, I will. Let me show you. Let me show you. One of the reasons that I decided to do this one, you'll hear some of our teachers um, talk about. Let's let's talk about a couple others. This one is called Pear Deck, uh, and Pear Deck. They say you know they'll transform presentations into a conversation, and you can have slides, and you can then um, you know add uh, add questions right within. This is called Pear Deck, but Pear Deck is not free. Um, and I'm not saying it's bad. We've got some teachers that are that are using it, but um, you know, if you want to use it as a teacher with all the features, it costs $150 mm -hmm. to to be able to do the whole thing. Most of these tools have a free level where you're going to get to do a certain amount of things, uh -huh. and then they want you to go ahead and buy it. So um, so Pear Deck is one that you'll hear people talk about. Another one that some of our teachers are are using and like is called Nearpod. Um, and so Nearpod also is letting you create an interactive lesson. And then this one, it doesn't have to be live like we're like we're doing right now. It can also be, and are you able to see my screen still, Joanne? Yes. yes. Okay, awesome. Um, 
so Nearpod can also be um, used to make an assignment that students would do independently, which is pretty cool. And um, so it's this is something that we've got some teachers um, that are using as well. Um, I put in on this page, the live teaching tool page, uh -huh. um, I, I put whether they're free or they cost money um, uh -huh. on most of these off to the side. Uh -huh. And so you mentioned Google Forms that you had done. And I think that is that is great. Um, but it's also it's also good to know. I mean, we can you can use Google Forms and have students click and do those. But there are some of those things that you can do inside Google Classroom. So why don't we do this? I'm going, to, and this is, by the way, I, I really wanted this to be kind of an introductory session to, oh. to some of these tools. Uh -huh. Why don't I show you um, how I made my Woo Clap? Okay. And then um, maybe we can talk a little bit about even Google Forms, Google or uh, in Google Classroom. Google Classroom really allows us to do some of the things Google Forms does right inside but students can see each other's responses a little bit. And I can show you uh, something that we did yesterday in, in one of our meetings. So okay. let me go ahead and uh, here in my Woo Clap, let's see, I want, to, I want to get out of this. So let's see, I'm going to click exit. And so now I'm, I'm in my kind of home screen here of Woo Clap. Okay. And wonder how I can re I want to rename my event. So I'm going to call this um, live teaching tools demo. And today is, is August 5th. So this was what I just created um, for today. I created these two questions. Um, I actually tried to make some in my session, and I'm gonna have to, I'll have to practice with that a little bit because that didn't work very good. Um, you're supposed to be able to do some live. Um, but I, I made some questions and then I, I added my, my Google Slides presentation. Um, and so this is where you would, you would build a lesson that you're going to want to do with students. And so um, it's really just a couple, a couple different parts. Um, this is the slideshow that I made in Google Slideshow. And I this is something that I had actually already had. I had created most of this before. Um, and the thing that WooClap uh, requires you to do when uh, so let me let me just let me just start over and do it do an example. So WooClap, you'll sign up for WooClap, you'll go here and you'll say sign up and you'll have a free account. And then you'll create an event which is saying like a class. This could, this could be a presentation like we're doing today, um, but I'm gonna call this, you know, demo two for August 4th. Um, so, so you need to think about whether you, what kinds of questions that you want to, to have students answer, and then if you want to add a presentation. Um, so, uh, Joanne, give me a question that you might ask students as they as they start the year is just like a, a poll question. Um, either and these actually can don't have to be about content. These could be check in questions too, um, as we just you know build relationship with students and check in with them and things. So, uh, what can we think of as a question we might ask our students uh, about the summer um, or? Um, I'll ask them if they have any uh, experience using their Chinese. There you go. Excellent. Uh -huh. So what experiences did you have this summer um, with uh, using Chinese? All right. And so if I wanted to have correct you know, answers that they could choose for, um, they could go, I guess I think they can do both. Um, I'm going to say none. <laughs> I bet many people didn't travel to China. Uh, <laughs> I'm going to say I used Chinese uh, with a stranger. Um, let's say I used Chinese uh, with a friend. You don't have to put these in. When I asked that first poll question, I just actually left it open. Uh -huh. And um, they'll be able to... Um, they can, they can just put it in a poll, isn't like a multiple choice where it has a you know right or wrong answer. Right. Even, uh, even they eat Chinese food, 
Yeah, that's right. That's well, right. Like, well, actually, let's dinner. let's do that. Let's ask them. We'll do, we're going to do a multiple choice question. So okay. uh, we'll say, um, have you eaten Chinese food in the last month? Okay. So this okay. is pretty easy. So this is just going to be a yes or no question. Okay. Um, so, and I'm clicking save. So what I'm, oh, and then I have to say the correct answer. Oh, well, there's not a correct answer. All right. <laughs> I guess I guess that means this is a poll. So if it doesn't have that's good to okay. If if it doesn't have a correct answer, then it's a poll. If it does have a correct answer, then it's multiple choice. So oh, let's do okay. a multiple choice question. Um, what would be a question that we could ask about China? Maybe uh, Chinese geography or um, the country of China. Um, how about the official? Uh, well, what is, yeah, we can say, what is the official um, Chinese dialect okay. of, uh, and would we just say mainland China? or yeah. just, uh, You can say the PR, People's Republic of China, PRC or something. Yeah, okay, there you go. Uh, and so that is Mandarin, correct? Yes. All right. Uh, what would be some other dialects of Chinese? Cantonese. Cantonese. Okay. Cantonese? <laughs> uh -huh. All right. Um, any others? Um, Shanghainese. Okay. Which is like the a dialect from Shanghai? Yes. And did I spell that right? I said Shanghai. Uh, I, I can't see very well. Yeah. Let me see. I'm going to let Google help me with my spelling. Nope, I didn't. There you go. Shanghainese. Okay. Okay, well, we're just going to go with that. And I'm going to say Mandarin is the is the correct answer. So I just okay. wanted to do that as an example. So okay. what I've done is I have these three um, questions that I've uh -huh. built. Here, and you could, you could just do that. You don't have to have a slideshow that goes with that. But if you want to have a slideshow, and that's kind of how I plan to use this, is to have questions that I want to ask students as we go uh -huh. along. But then have some slides, you know, of content um, and maybe activities and things like that that they're going to do. So this is where I build my question. Um, or here, let's do a. Oh, this is kind of fun. Um, a rating. Uh, so let's do a Chinese food. Uh, which, uh, or so, we'll say rate uh -huh. the Chinese foods in your order of preference. Uh -huh. this is definitely going to be what everyone's not going to have the same answer to. So um, let's say what uh, give me give me some different uh, Chinese food dishes that are um, that are common. Um, uh, sweet and sour pork. Yep, sweet and sour pork. Um, chicken fried pork. rice. Chicken fried rice. Let's do one more. Okay, egg drop soup. There you go. Perfect. All right. Okay, so I'm gonna say save. So that's cool. So um, there's, a, the, there's a bunch of different options here that students can do. We could have them sort things. We could have them fill in the blank. I mean, one of the things that's hard about this is like we're having to make this and create it, right? So yeah. it's not like my textbook, you know, has these and I just can bring them in. Mm -hmm. At some point down the road, we may get textbooks <laughs> that have these kinds of things built in where we don't have to make them. But right now, like for Spanish, I mean, I've got my, my textbook. I don't, I don't have a digital textbook, it's paper. So anyway, this is part of just what, I'll ha what I will have to do, you know, for preparing for the lessons. But I really think this is cool since it has so many different kinds of questions and we'll experiment. I mean, that's one thing that makes it interesting for kids too, um, is kind of mixing it up with something different and so I like that, that there's different kinds of questions here. Um, so let me go ahead and add a presentation and show you that. And then we'll, I'll, I'll give you the link and we'll, we'll, we'll try this one more time to kind of see how this looks. So when I say add a presentation, um, I, could, I could get a PowerPoint, a keynote, or a PDF. But if I have a Google slide, there's a special technique and, and they describe how to, how to do this. Um, a special link that we have to get for our Google presentation. So over here, uh, normally when I would just get a link, I could click on share and I would copy the link and I could you know, say, I wanna let this be shared for more people. 
The trick with Google Slides is I have to go to File and choose Publish and then click Publish. And this gives me this special link and that's the link that I, that I copy in order to make my presentation. So I'm gonna paste that, <coughs> pardon me. I'm gonna paste that link in and now my slide presentation is, is part of my, uh, my Woo Clap. So I've got four questions here. I've got a presentation. Uh, this is kind of cool. I could make people um, uh, choose a username. I could give them a button to say I'm confused. Ooh, I like that. <laughs> so if they're confused, they can click a button. And see, actually, that kind of thing is really important because when we're if if and when we're remote, we can't see yes the students like. And that's a bad thing, really. I like Zoom a lot. One of the things I like. I want to be able to see my students and my my content. But with Google Hangout Meet, which I'm glad that we have it, and I, it, it has a lot of advantages, but one thing it doesn't do right now is let me see my students at the same time I'm sharing content. Uh -huh. So anyway, that might be kind of cool to be able to let participants have a button that says, I'm, uh -huh. you know, I'm confused. Uh -huh. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna go ahead and start. And so there's a button right here in the middle. It says how to participate, click start, and it gives this link. So I'm gonna copy this link and I'm gonna put it into our Hangout Meet, just like we did before. And if you wanna click on that link, and Emily is back with us, yay. Um, and if Emily wants to, that's fine. Um, there's a link that I put there into the chat to WooClap, and that is the, the page that you're going to open and, and, and be able to see. So. I've clicked on that link. Now I'm going to go to the first one. And so question one, if you guys will click on your answer, what experiences did you have this summer with using Chinese? Did you not have any? Did you use Chinese with a stranger? Did you use Chinese with a friend? Uh, if you'll go ahead and select your answer and click submit. And so I will see these results come in live. This is kind of cool. So at the top, there's a new button that I see. Uh, are confused. And so that could be, that's a really neat way actually for me to be able to get feedback from my students. And I might prompt them to say, you know, to pause at a particular moment in my pre presentation to say, you guys, is anybody having any questions about this? Do you want any more explanation? I'm going to go ahead and click my button that says results. Go ahead, Joanne. I, I, I don't want to break you guys off or anything like that. The reason I'm not participating, my computer does not support Google Meets. Yeah. Um, it immediately shuts down. That's what happened last time. So I, this is all super interesting. I'm listening. Um, I'm learning. Um, but I, I, I've got some questions. Um, oh, yeah, absolutely. Well, let me just finish this little demo and then let's ask the questions. Emily, we got to get you a new computer because that's just not acceptable. Free image twice. Well, they got to get you a new computer. I mean, this, yeah, that, I, yeah. I mean, this is the kind of thing we gotta, we gotta escalate with, uh, with John and whoever, because that's, uh, that is not, not an acceptable thing. I'm the only faculty member experiencing this either. So apparently, it's, it's pretty widespread. But yeah, the computer that I use, it just, you know, at first everything uh, freezes, and then my entire computer freezes and locks up. So I'm joining you guys by my phone. Yeah. It won't allow me to click in to any of the links or anything like that through my phone. Okay. Huge problem, which we've got to we've got to definitely get an answer to that. I'm I'm sorry to hear that, but I'm also glad to hear that because I was I was telling um, Lynn Robertson earlier this today. I mean. I'm, I'm teaching full time this year, but I'm still doing some support roles. It's just for the fall semester I'm teaching Spanish. Um, but uh, I want to continue to be a voice for our teachers as we are seeking help and getting stuff fixed. So um, anyway, let, we'll, we'll, we'll follow up on that some more because, yeah, you, you, we've got we've to get you a computer that fully works with, with every tool that we, we have. Um, Okay, so Joanne, were you, are you able to, did you click that link? Are you able to see the question? Uh, let me see. If you go back to the Hangout Meet, so you go back to the tab, and this will be one of the things that, 
we will we will want to navigate with our students and whether we're using Zoom or Google Meet or whatever, especially since they don't have more than one screen. And I don't sit right now either. I'm just okay. using my, my laptop. Okay, I got yep. that. That's yep, if you click that link, that WooClap link, um, one of the things that I like, and then you can go ahead and answer the, you see the, the question of yeah, the, that experience. Yeah, yeah, go ahead and, and click and, and submit an answer. And I, we should be able to see, see your answer come in. Um, there you go. Yay, there's a live answer. Uh, that, was, that was me. I'm able to put it into my computer. And oh, work. you were. Okay, cool. Well, one of the things that is confusing, but I also like about WooClap, but it can be potentially confusing with all these tools, is like multiple windows, multiple places. Hmm. So if you use WooClap, um, it has at the bottom my, my questions here, but then I can flip right over and start going to my presentation. So I don't actually, as a teacher, have to be switching in between stuff. Once I get my students into the it, on this WooClap link, um, which should actually work on an on an iPad or uh, you know other things, um, I can go through my content. Here's my slides. Here's my you know uh, stuff that I want to show. And now, guys, let's go to my next question, uh, which is going to be, and I click on my arrow here. I think we did a different kind of question. Maybe I can click on it. Come on. Hmm. I still have the same questions. Yeah, I do too. <laughs> okay, come on, Wes. All right, I'm trying to advance to my next slide. Three. Okay, I'm going to try to turn off. I'm going to get into this again. Huh. This is one of those moments where it's like, wow, isn't it so great how easy it is? I don't know why my buttons here are not working. All right. I'm going to exit and I'm going to click start here. Okay. Do you see the second question now? Have you eaten Chinese food in the last uh, one? Yes. Okay. I am learning too. And one of the reasons, yay, one of the reasons why I wanted to try this and play with this a little bit um, was to give me some, to give me some experience doing this. Um, Should I go ahead and answer? Yeah. Yeah. If you want to go ahead and answer, you can. Um, I guess as a teacher, yep, we have two, two, two answers for, uh, for yes. Okay. Now it's working. <laughs> okay, um, yeah, let's go. Some, yeah, sometimes. Okay. Here we go. Multiple choice question. There's a right answer. What is the official Chinese dialect of the PRC? You can say Mandarin, Cantonese, or Shanghaiese. Yes. You all got that right. And last one, this is cool. I haven't tried this one. I want you to rate these foods in your order of preference. Uh, from one to five. So your favorite food is going to be a one. Your least favorite food is going to be a five. And I think, can you, are you able to drag those or what is it? Uh, let me see. Um, oh, and I misspelled egg rolls. Sorry. <laughs> okay. So the, the most favorite is five. I guess so. Yeah, actually that is, yeah. Okay. Mo most favorite will be five, least favorite will be one. Um, and so as the teacher, oh, this is interesting. Huh, huh. Um, since this is a different kind of question, that's kind of cool. There's, a, it looks like a spider web. It's called a radar chart. Oh, um, that is cool. And then I can also see the results here. Yeah, so this is why I think uh, using some different tools beyond Google Classroom, and again, I'm, I'm really, I'm thinking a lot about remote learning. I mean, nobody knows, right? But I think it's a really good chance that we're going to be in remote learning for part of the year. Tools like this that let us have different interactive live ways to get our students involved, giving feedback, um, I think are, are really going to be important because, you know, it is just super boring to sit there and listen to somebody, you know, talk for a long time without having 
the chance to, to interact and have a break and those kind of things. And there's all kinds of ways to do that. But anyway, this was probably one of the main things I was excited about learning this summer was about WooClap. Um, I love, of course, the fact that it's free. And I also like the fact that um, it lets me toggle, like I said, between you know, live teaching and, and the interactive polling. So it was something they used in a lot of that, the presentations for that virtual conference. Um, so um, it is one of many tools that are here. And you do not have to use any of these. In fact, I'm gonna stop sharing my screen here for a second. Um, you don't have to use any of these, of course. Um, and, and I also recognize that it complicates things when we introduce new tools, right? Students aren't gonna to wanna to have 10 different, I mean, we had a survey that um, that the upper division students did. And I mean, there's there's a large number of different tools that, that some students, you know, reported using. So I think there's a balance, but if we have a way, for instance, to take our slides that we make in Google Slide Show and, um, you know, being able to record our voice and, and make videos, I think that's a really, really good thing for us to do. There's several ways to do that. But then what we've talked about today with live teaching, where I can have some slides and talk to you about that and share that, but then I can switch to questions. And it's not just multiple choice. And it's not just, you know, um, open-ended answer. Um, that way, like I hadn't done one of those ratings before to see that that web and stuff, but um, I'm, I'm only kind of scratching the surface. I think there's about 10 or 15 different kinds of question types that that allows. And, um, you know, again, WooClap is free for all K-12. So unlike some other tools like Pear Deck and Nearpod that we're going to have to have conversations about who's, you know, who do we pay for it? Who pays for it? How do we negotiate that? We don't have to have that money conversation at all about WooClap. And so that's why I thought it would be good to, to introduce that. Sure. We have actually gone over the 30 minutes, but that is not a problem because nobody's going to tell us to He's going to shut down. Thank so, you. <laughs> Emily, do you have any questions relating to live teaching tools or, or yeah. anything else you're bringing? This is really exciting. Um, and I'd love to be able to, um, like, if you have a, on the support page, if there are things like that to play around, because in particular, the one that I'm most concerned about is my AP US history class, where we're, I mean, we have to move so quickly. Right. We have so much content to cover, but yeah. I do, I don't want to sit and just speak at the students right? for, um, you know, an hour at a time. I think that that's going to be really difficult. One of the other things that I was wondering if you had any sort of suggestions on is for when we are all in class together, how can I effectively split them up to do group work? Right. For suggestions for, because I, I don't want it to just be me lecturing i mean i i'll need to do that a lot in this particular class but i i do try to mix it up you know with my students have them do group work or have them yeah um, you know do things like that and i'm just with the inability of them to actually be together yeah uh, and, and kind of work i mean one of the first things i do on the first day is like a jigsaw yes where students work in a group and then members of that group kind of go and disperse and share their knowledge Right. With the other groups. And so I'm trying to envision how something might, how I might be able to use technology to be able to still allow my students to work together and have those cool conversations, especially when I can't work with them on Google Meets. Yep. Yep. No, absolutely. Okay. So let me just show you something. Yesterday we had a meeting uh, that Sandy Nelson led, um, and she just made a new Google Classroom she called Faculty Leaders. Uh -huh. But I'll tell you two activities that we did um, that could be done with your face-to-face -face kids working in groups, or okay. and it could also be the, the flex kids. Um, you might think about putting the flex kids kind of officially in their own, you know, cohort or their own working group. And so, like, she made this topic called discussion questions. And uh -huh. so you could have these organized by groups and whatever you wanted to do, if they were colors or numbers or whatever. <laughs> So she actually just had question one be for everybody, but it wouldn't have to be that way. And so uh, this is a way inside Google Classroom that we right. can have students, you know, we can ask a question, we can have students respond and see each other's answers and then actually reply. So like I can, I can reply to Mystery Reed or I could reply to Josh 
So that's one thought. But as far as the project work, I'm going to go down here to where she put this learning guide practice adjustment. And, and this is a slideshow. When you put a slideshow into Google Classroom, when you make an assignment, uh, well, let me just actually let me let me show that I'll go back. I'm going to I'm going to show how to add this and then I'll I'm going to go to her example. So here's here's a class where I'm a teacher and I'm going to go to classwork and say I'm going to make an assignment. Right. When I go ahead and add a slideshow. So let's I know it recently it'll it's going to come up. There's my woo clap because that's the last thing I did. When I say add, I have the choice and this only happens when I first make an assignment. I can't edit it later and do this. Right. I can make a copy for every student. Okay. That means that if and I I used this a lot last year where I made a slideshow of the steps that I wanted the students to do. And they were going to turn in their own product. It was just like I made a, a packet, really, of, of, of worksheets, stapled together and handed it to them, except it was a slideshow that had multiple slides. What I'm going to show you now, though, and talk about is this second choice. Sometimes we're going to do view the file. And that's really like a material where I'm like, here's my slideshow. You guys can have it. You can click on it. You know, and I'm you familiar with that because even when I lecture in class, I always put my slideshows up there for students. And right. I also talk to you too while you've got me thinking about that about creating a class folder so that I'm not having to do that for every single class yes yes I think that's a good practice is to is to have that folder because you can share that folder and it can just be there's different ways that we can we can have people well because as an example so this is this is the Google site that I you know have used for my classes but I I have this one folder that has every slideshow that I've used I, I organize them by um, trimester so this, those are all my slideshows from the spring. Um, but I, I love that idea of here's a folder. So like there's every slideshow I did in the winter, you know? Mm -hmm. um, and, and anyway, it just gives students another way to be able to get to it. What I wanna show you all an example of real quick though is the second choice here where students can edit the file. So that's, you know, that's what we did yesterday. And I think this can work really well. And in fact, I'll probably do this early with my, with my kids this year is that I will make a slide for them. So I'm gonna leave, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna leave this class and go back to the one we did yesterday. So this is our faculty leaders. At the very bottom, Sandy gave us this assignment and here's the slideshow. What she did was she made a slide for each one of us. And so we went in live and I'll have to find where mine is. I put my picture on mine. Um, we actually could see each other's work and we could, oh man, a lot more people put their stuff on here. And then we gave comments to each other. Um, right, because you commented on mine about it'd be really easy instead of these links to make a shared folder that the students could go and access. Okay. Yeah, exactly. And that's okay. That, uh, that's right. You were there. <laughs> and I commented on it. I like this. I like this a lot. I think this can work great um, for, for many reasons. But what she did well was instead of telling the, instead of telling the students um, that they um, just make a slide, she duplicated one and already put their name on it. And I think that is a very good technique. It saves time. It lets them go right to their slide. But this also works good with the technology because if you've ever had a Google Doc open and everyone's just typing on it, that can be kind of a dumpster fire. So yeah. if you have a different slide that groups work on together or individuals work on together, it really is a good way to make the learning visible where they can see each other's thinking and their, their work. It also is a wonderful way for them to provide feedback. And so that just, I mean, Sandy did a great job modeling that yesterday where we had an individual assignment and we had some time, but then we had feedback. And I mean, one of the ways you can also structure that is you can have students assigned like Wes is going to give feedback to Sarah and Alex, you know, it, okay. that way you make sure everybody's getting feedback right. and that's part of the expectation. But I'm, I think that this, this is a really great, and then this can also work later, right? Like we didn't have 33 slides. I don't think in this last yesterday, or maybe we did. Anyway, there's a lot of content that's been added to this. And so when you think about students who are on flex and they're not live in the classroom, like this is something we can work on live, but then students will be able to go to it on their own time 
And anyway, it, it'll work on both a real-time basis and then also an anytime basis for students that aren't there live. That would be super helpful, yes. Cool. Well, I wanna encourage you all to give, give feedback. I mean, like my time and bandwidth to do the coaching stuff is definitely gonna be less this year, um, but I'm gonna do it. I'm still gonna do some of it. And like, hey, it's so cool because I'm teaching six sections and I'm teaching freaking Spanish. Like, I'm pretty excited about it actually um, because I'm gonna have a lot of fun with it. I figure this this is fifth grade. If all these fifth graders choose French, I'm a dismal failure. But if I can at least get some kids to go for Spanish, Anyway, I, I think it's going to be fun, and we're all going to be learning, like, no matter how much we know or don't know, th there's so much different that, that I, I want to just continue to hopefully provide opportunities for us to share what worked, what we're trying, um, and, and navigate things from, I mean, and I'm honestly very thankful to not be in charge of everything, uh, technically, because that was like, it's, it's a good time to not be in charge of everything <laughs> technologically. But I do want to advocate, in your case, Emily, for, you know, we got to get you a working laptop. Like, and, and the school just may need to buy a new one or whatever. Right. Because, you know. All right. So any other questions that you all can think of right now that you'd like to ask? Well, I, I, to that end, I've put in several requests. Um, and, and alerted them every single time. Um, I will send another help desk, was on Google Meets today, C entire computer froze, had to manually shut down. Yeah. Um, but do you know, aside from sitting in help desk tickets, what would probably be the, the best way or who? I, I think we just have to elevate this to division directors and to our academic chain. Um, because especially when it gets to that point of, I can't teach. Um, I mean, ideally, these are things that uh, the help desk is going to triage and they're going to treat that as a top priority and they're going to get that done. But when we have these kinds of issues that aren't being addressed, um, I think we need to work through our uh, sort of chain of command with our division directors and okay. you know, get them to get them. Well, to, that's uh, what I'm terrified of, honestly, that we uh, go out and yeah. I have to. Right. Gather or patch something in through my phone to have a conversation hey, with. I I will help advocate for you as well. I delivered to a, a lower division teacher's house a laptop last year, shortly after we went, because she couldn't do anything, and she, you know, she had to be having her iPad to teach with and to connect, and her computer didn't do it. So, um, yes, we'll we'll advocate together for that and work with. John and you know the here's the thing and this is just my I'm gonna this is being recorded I'm gonna pick I always want to pick my words really carefully and I'll speak aspirationally and very positive we have this good opportunity in our school to elevate the support um, the support uh, services offered to our faculty because we we not only need to have very timely and just in time technical but this kind of stuff like we're doing today, it's so important to be able to have the instructional, but we can't be here if the, <laughs> if the hangout meet doesn't work. So we, right. gotta have, we gotta have both of them. And I think that our feedback is gonna continue to be very important um, as the school you know, looks at that and decides how to allocate resources and, and hire staff and, and all that. So Joanne, is there anything you can think of right now that you'd uh, like? Not at this moment. Okay. Well, I'm so glad that you came. I appreciate both of you being here. Thank you. Thank, you, well, thank you so much for your help, really, Wes. Yeah, thank absolutely. Well, I, here. I haven't offered this particular, you know, named workshop before, and there's probably a lot of people that didn't know, you know, what does that mean? Is it relevant to me? And I, um, I think we'll we'll continue to have these conversations because I know Stephanie Crosno mentioned, um, I think maybe it was Pear Deck um, last yesterday, or it was one of those other ones, like. There's a lot of these tools that really do offer some great, you know, we could call it formative assessment, you know, summative assessment. I mean, there's different words that we'll say, but it's it's interactive. It's ways that we we find out, you know, what's going on in the heads of our kids. It helps us have better conversations because, you know, with more feedback and more information from them, you know, we can customize what we're doing. And I also think that, you know, we're, it will actually be easier for us if everyone was doing the same thing. Yes. Everyone is not going to be face to face, unfortunately. At some point, we may all be remote. I actually think it will be easier just because we won't have to be thinking about, you know, three, three different models or two different models or whatever. But, you know, we're going to make the make the best of it. So um, 
I appreciate you all being here and um, definitely, you know, continue to use the help desk at Cassidy. But when you're not getting a response, and especially when it's this kind of case, then let's let's escalate that through the division directors and you know get a get a resolution because there there needs to be a point at which you know when the machine has been re-imaged and it still doesn't work, that means it's hardware. That that rules out software. Right. And so that hardware either needs to be repaired or, or replaced. So Okay, well, I will ask Dr. Powell today at the department chair's meeting if, you know. He can help you, yes, help you escalate the ticket, which has been, you know, languishing for, it sounds like, a while. Very all good. right. All well, right. Great to see you all. Yeah, it's great to see you, you all. Thank you. All and right. Thank you very much. I'll okay. see you around. Okay. Thanks. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.